since a lot of this stuff has started to ramp up, um, a lot of the mass shootings were the kickoff to it. Um, there's been a stronger growth in, I'm going to say, teachers and superintendents and even pastors or ministers of churches uh, hmm. that that have grown, you know, have started to want to carry or feel they have a need to carry, not that they want to. Um, so I would say it went from, uh, you know, more isolated to even the younger generation uh, to women. Women have become a real strong uh, following of or, or need for carrying and concealed. Um, I've had women in here, you know, as young enough to be my daughter and, and old enough to be my grandmother. Um, from the professional to the home wife uh, or the housewife. Uh, there's not really, there's no more of a, I'm gonna say a delineation between the two. It used to be, you know, if you were country, it, the husband and wife would always come in. Now I got a lot more women coming in. An interesting thing was law enforcement. For the long time, law, I didn't realize that most law enforcement were carrying off duty. And we saw an increase in that. A lot of the feedback from them was, well, they weren't going to be cowering under a table, you know, in a shooting anymore. Welcome back to the Healthy Business Podcast. 400 million. There's 400 million guns in circulation in the United States of America for a population of 330 million men, women, and children. There are more guns than there are people in the United States of America. And in 2020, in the first six months, we've almost bought another 20 million guns in that first six months. Guns are selling at a record pace. And unfortunately, uh, because of the times, that is uh, what is happening. People are asking, should I buy a gun? And that is why I brought on Jeff Benty, who is the owner of Just Holster It, a uh, store that sells uh, gun holsters and uh, gun safes. And Jeff certainly has his finger on the pulse of what's going on in the gun industry and uh, shares uh, some of uh, what he knows, uh, including the type of people that are buying guns today. As you heard in the intro, it's no longer the people that uh, you would uh, predict. It's, it's pastors, it's teachers, it's uh, off-duty police officers. It's people that have never considered it before. And during this interview, I ask uh, Jeff uh, what his advice is for somebody who, who is uh, interested or, or thinking about purchasing a gun to protect their business, to protect their family. During this conversation, Jeff also puts in a, a plug for the Center for Entrepreneurial Leadership. He was a student in the core class, the UB Center for Entrepreneurial Leadership, and shares how he uh, ended up with an extra $350,000 in sales just from the advice that he received during this core class. And uh, I think uh, you want to listen to that, especially if you're, you're a, uh, a business owner that's struggling right now. This core class is an incredible investment. They are uh, enrolling students for the next year's class right now. And uh, you'll see a link in the show notes for that as well. So next up, Jeff Benty, the owner of Just Holster It. Jeff, why don't, why don't you just, how, first of all, how long have you been in business? Just Holster it started in 2013 out of a basement. Um, it started as a hobby. Um, and then I dragged my father into it with me, and uh, we've kind of been growing it from there. And, and so it was a hobby. Uh, I would assume that means that you always were around guns. Give me a little history on, on your interest in guns. So let's see for about me. Um, I grew, I grew up around hunting all my life. My father was a hunter. I grew up around all his friends that hunted. Um, from there I went into the military and I was a law enforcement officer in the air force. Um, so I was more subjected to it there. Um, when I got 
out of the Air Force. I tried to go for law enforcement, found out some of the caveats there. Um, but I, then I, I started carrying guns myself and started running into problems um, of buying over the internet and stuff like that. So I started to play around a little bit and, and started to develop some holsters um, while I was as a side ho a hobby to my regular uh, sales and marketing job. From there, we uh, turned around and uh, pulled my father into it, and we started for over a year and a half just working out of our basement, um, and then rented out a space um, focused on just manufacturing and stuff in Alden. Uh, it was a halfway point between both of us. Uh, it was also the middle of seven correctional facilities, so it kind of made for a target audience, mm. a unique placement. Uh, and then finally, down the road, we ended up buying the place we're at, still in Alden, uh, right down Main Street, Broadway. Uh, but it expanded our production capabilities. It gave us the ability to have a showroom, office space, uh, warehousing, just a lot of different avenues. So do you make the holsters yourself? So the rigid holsters, or the, what they call a plastic or a Kydex holster, we do manufacture ourselves. Hmm. We thermoform. Um, which is basically heating the material to, to about 300 degrees and then wrapping it or vacuum forming it over molds. Hmm. Um, we, in addition to just holsters, also get into other manufacturing products. So we help, uh, we've worked with other smaller companies and help them grow. Uh, we have a customer we do sheaths for that does about 1500 a week. We ship out about 1500 a week. Well, you clearly you're in the gun industry and that's about as divisive of a topic as you get in this country. Um, when you tell people what you do, how, how do they respond usually? Um, it's, it depends on the crowd you're in. So for example, when I went into cell, uh, cell, I wasn't sure what to, I was still trying to feel out the crowd. So I really told people I was just in manufacturing. Which, um, which but, by the way, for those listeners who don't know, the Center for Entrepreneurial Leadership, which is a class that you uh, were a part of uh, in the previous year. Right? Yes, yeah. thank you. So and you, then, you, you just told them you were a manufacturer? You didn't tell them you were... I any... didn't mention guns or holsters because you get mixed emotions. Um, I've had people be very harsh with me and not want to talk to me uh, because I'm in the gun industry. Um, and I've had others that, you know, uh, there's a very loyal following to the industry um, because I think it gets to the grassroots of, uh, of the country. You know, it's, it's that Second Amendment, American pride. Um, we're also a veteran-owned business, so that, that ties another uh, component into it. So a lot of the people, the followers are very dedicated followers. Um, but the anti-gun people are very anti-guns. So you do get a mixed, mixed batch of people. Um, I will say this has probably been the best paying industry I've ever been in when it comes to my client base. Uh, my customers all pay within, my wholesale customers all pay within 30 days or less, mm. um, which is astronomical. I was in the construction industry and it would push 30, 60, 90, most of them at 60 and 90 still. So there's, there's money in guns. I think there's always going to be money in guns. <laughs> <laughs> Who, so you, you had mentioned the, the type of people. So give me an idea. Who, who is the ideal client and, and has that changed any during this whole period of time, COVID and the riots and all that? That's a very interesting question. Um, so I think there was always a silent crowd of, there was either the diehard gun enthusiast, which are your hunters and your, your law enforcement audience. Um, and you're, 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 wanting, you know, you're building concealed carry, but there was a lot of people out there that weren't very vocal about it. Um, you know, so they weren't even carrying off duty, even though I would think they'd be more subjected to, the, to that. Wow. Yeah, that's interesting. Uh, the women that are coming in, what, what kind of guns are they buying? Um, I've had 
So I've had women, most women are coming in by carrying something that they can. We don't sell guns, so let's clarify that. We only right. sell holsters. Right. But by the time they come to us, they're looking for a way to conceal it or, or carry it at the gun range. Um, and most of them are carrying very compact firearms. Um, I'm going to say in a 380 to 9 millimeter caliber. However, I do get some women that are coming in with a lot larger, say a Glock 19, which is about a four and a quarter inch barrel, double stacked. It's a big, fat, thicker gun. Um, so, and they want to try to conceal it, <laughs> which is always the challenge. I always say that uh, if the more of the gun shops would do a little more education than not just what's on sale, they'd do a lot better. Now that you brought up the, the Center for Entrepreneurial Leadership, I am curious, what, what kind of impact did that have, that class have uh, for you and your business? So beyond just, okay, um, my team of reactors and mentors that came together, I engaged them very heavily. Um, and some of them had made some serious comments that made me rethink. So when I came in to sell, I came into it with an approach. I want to grow my business nationally. I want to be a national sales arm. I want my brand everywhere. As I came out the other side of it, I was okay if it wasn't my name on the product. Um, Dr. Starr told me, hey, you want to be the guy? You want to be the uh, Rain-X guy or you want to be the guy that puts the little rubber strips and all the wipers? Um, so coming out of it, they pushed me on some things. And because of, I, I can honestly say because of sell, I landed a $350,000 contract. Wow. On that's great. On top of that, we've restructured some other things and are going in another direction uh, or another division of the company. Um, and I landed another 15,000 on it. Now mm -hmm. that's just through what went through sell. Um, as we came out of sell, or we were at the end of sell, the pandemic started. Um, our class is so strongly tight knit. We were there for each other, uh, engaging and sharing information daily. I don't know if I would have been where I needed to be um, with knowledge on, on, say, the PPP loans or the disaster loans or or just even what you should or shouldn't do, be doing uh, if it hadn't been for my classmates. Um, we still, we talk literally every day. We're like a family. And when you need help, you can go right to them and just, you know, I put, we use a group called uh, group me or as a chat option. And I can literally post something out there and just say, Hey, what's everybody doing for this? Um, a good example is today I put out uh, to our group uh, about the changes coming for sick leave. And just asked, you know, what's everybody doing? Has anybody updated? How are they doing their employee handbooks? And you're just a wealth of knowledge coming in. Uh, yeah. So, Cell has far advanced my company, probably what would have taken me five or six years to do. Wow. Uh, got me back working on, on the company and making what it is, you know, building it into what it's become already. So, yeah, I can't say enough about Cell. Well, I'll tell you what, it sounded to me like, I, I, as I was adding it up, you said like $350,000 of, of, of business that you can uh, credit CEL in one way or another for? Without, yeah, 350000 there and another 30000 in other avenues. Wow. Um, and that's growing because of the things that the group steered and information shared, you know, um, got me to restructure some things and, and now the company's making even more money and it, it is directly tied to sell or the, my class. Excellent. And that rela those relationships with your class and just for those who don't know the Center for Entrepreneurial Leadership, it's a class of, of other business owners that uh, Jeff was uh, in class with. Um, you guys, you're, you're continuing to talk. It's like a mastermind group from that point yeah. on. Without a doubt. So literally, we're just, I don't even picture, because even your, so as a business owner, even your family doesn't understand what you're going through a lot of times. Mm. So you've got these other people that are living the same thing you're doing, and you can actually reach out to them and say, hey, how would you handle this? Um, 
I, I had a case last week and I was able to co contact one of the law, uh, law firms in the class and just kind of get a feel for what I should or shouldn't do on some things. Um, so you, you just, that kind of advice and, and friendship, you, you can't replace. Um, and you've got somebody that relates to what you're going through. Do you want to give the uh, law firm a plug, <laughs> the name of the person? <laughs> it was actually Coppola Law. Uh, Lisa, go. Coppola. Lisa Coppola. Very good. Yes. Very good. <laughs> um, but uh, there, yeah, we've, without a doubt, the whole group is tied together. And, and I think most of the businesses came through uh, the, most of this pandemic stronger and, and better because of, of the cell and because of our class as a group, as a family. Excellent. Well, that was a nice plug for the Center for Entrepreneurial Leadership, which happens to be uh, signing up for the new class. So hopefully if you hear this and you want to, uh, to make an extra $350,000, it's really simple. You just sign up for the CEO. Right. <laughs> and, uh, and roll up your sleeves and get ready to start working on your company again. What a deal. <laughs> I think the biggest thing is that there's two things they do. They reestablish you with great connections and they actually get you working for on your company instead of for your company. Fantastic. What, uh, what's a range of, uh, uh, price for your holsters? Um, our holsters range in price, uh, in the shop for a standard inside or outside the waistband holster goes anywhere from, I'm going to say $40 on up to, uh, top end is, 60 70 dollars mm -hmm. uh if you get into the shoulder holsters or or the different things that are a little more elaborate then you get up into the 150 dollar range and then just your standard gun like what, what kind of ranges are we talking for guns guns can be as cheap um so a simple lcp or a caltech which is like a 380 caliber they're going to range uh, 170 dollars to to say 250. Mm -hmm. You get into the mid-sized guns, and you're looking at probably on average four to five hundred dollars. And and do people typically do you find that they buy more than one gun? Um, now with the, everything going on, which I probably should have touched on a little more, the the pandemic, um, the uh, defunding the police departments and um, making people jobless, uh, they've really ramped up. Right now, if you, to find a handgun for sale in, the, in any of the local shops is pretty difficult. Mm. As fast as they're getting them in, they're shipping them out. Um, so it's a, it's a, more and more people are buying. There's, as the p local pistol permit office told me, they are getting more people registering guns than they are getting people to take guns off their permits right now. Wow. That's incredible. Yeah. I have some numbers to, to share with you on that. I, I was uh, looking that up earlier and uh, currently there's 400 million guns in circulation today for a population in America of 330 million men, women, and children. So far more guns than there are people. In the first six months of 2020, 19 million firearms sold. So that's, that's more than one gun for every 20 Americans just in 2020 on the first six months alone. And 3.9 million, a record, 3.9 million guns sold in June alone. Amazing. Yeah. I believe that was through the next data, correct? Yes. And uh, which that June was a record, a second highest month in the history of the mix program, which makes mm -hmm. for a, uh, an astonishing, I mean, they had that, the, the, the highest month was back when they started the program. Uh, another interesting fact is that of all the states in the country, uh, all of them, but 12 states actually utilize the NICS program. So if there's 12 states that only check at a state level, not a federal level, which means you've got 12 states out there that, that, that aren't even attributing or contributing the, the data to those numbers. Oh, wow. They don't have to collect the They're data. Only, they only required to check at a, at a state level, not a federal level to background check. So I would assume that those states are easier to buy from? 
Um, I wouldn't say they're easier, but it, say somebody, uh, I'll use Louisiana as an example, it's one of those states. Say somebody up here in, or, uh, up here in New York committed a felony and went and moved to Louisiana. The, that would not show up on their background check because mm -hmm. they're not checking the federal system. They're only checking the state level system. So it would ultimately not show up that they had a felony and restricting for buying a gun. That's some of the loopholes that they've talked about trying to, to close up. Yeah, yeah. Um, you had mentioned that uh, the pay is, you know, you're getting paid within 30 days and things like that. Um, where are people finding the money for, for all these guns? Um, I honestly, I, I, many of my customers have come into the store that we interact with and have told us that they are, uh, that they're thanking the gov U.S. government for the extra money coming from the $600, uh, extra unemployment, uh, the stimulus check. I had one customer told me that, uh, he can't wait for the next stimulus check to come out because he's going to, he's already got the next two, three guns he wants to buy lined up. So they're they're actually telling you they're using some or all of the six hundred dollar uh, yep. unemployment check to uh, pay for another gun. Wow, that's incredible. And I think others are just doing it for security. The, I think the biggest thing I hear from most of my customers is that you know the, I had a lot. I've had a lot of them lately coming in saying that they they've had their pistol permit for years but never put anything on it. But with everything changing, they they feel that they have have to feel more secure. So they're now investing in going out and finding a handgun to to feel more comfortable with uh, where they go and what they do. You know, I I've never I've never owned a gun. I've never even touched a gun i've never shot a gun or anything like that but i with everything going on i've even considered it you know and i guess i guess if if i were to ask you this question jeff should i should i buy a gun to protect my business my family what what kind of advice would you give me so first and foremost you and that's a, that's an interesting question because i if if i know you then it makes it a little easier. I know your background and I know about you, so I can steer you. But if you were a customer to walk into the store, I, I, the very first question I would ask you is, is, are you going to feel comfortable handling the fire? Hmm. Or are you going to take additional classes to ensure that you are comfortable handling the fire? Because if you're not comfortable with it, then you're not going to be comfortable in a situation when you need it. Um, I would say that things are changing all the time. I never worried about it in my backyard before, even when I had the business, until there was the shooting at, uh, I think, the Dollar General in Chito Waga, mm -hmm. where the guy started shooting it up with an AR. And then it was a reality check. That, yes, this is in your backyard. Um, so if you are at a point you're in, in with everything going on that you're feeling some insecurity, I would definitely tell you, go out, you know, um, take the class, get your paperwork started. Um, I heard in Erie County currently it's about six to eight months to get your permit. Mm. Um, and in the meantime, start take, you know, and then take some follow-up classes so that you've got a comfort and secure, you know, level with it that you know you can handle it and carry it confidently. Um, but it starts with, I tell a lot of my customers, start by wearing it around the house. Get comfortable wearing it because as you go out there, then you're going to start looking at other people and wondering who else is carrying it. Oh, wow. And, and if I were seriously considering it, is there a way to, to, to maybe practice first, like to, to test a gun or two and just you know, know how it feels and everything? Or, or does it not work that way? So with handguns, no. Um, if you wanted to go out and buy a long gun or, or try a long gun, such as a rifle or a shotgun, um, there's many ranges that actually do rent them out and you can, and you can try them out. With a handgun, um, New York state law is pretty strict in that method um, in that you can only try a gun if it's your immediate, say your father had handguns, you could go and shoot one of his, but otherwise you could not go to a gun store and handle a uh, handgun without uh, having a pistol permit in place. Mm. So they're pretty stringent in that aspect. With a rifle and shotgun, it's a little easier. Um, 
and with, for a rifle and shotgun purchase, it's a much quicker process. There's no state exam or no judge signing off on you that you're uh, capable of having a handgun, which is another important fact to bring up. Um, to go through a, to buy a rifle or a shotgun, you can walk into a store, pick one out, get a federal background check and walk out of the store with the, the rifle or shotgun. Mm. Um, for a pistol permit, you have to take a class on the laws and the safety. Then you have to actually be fingerprinted um, and you actually go through a full background check with even potentially a, a sheriff showing up at your door to, to kind of inspect your premises. And then finally a judge signing off that you're capable to carry. And he may restrict you just to hunting and target versus full on uh, concealed carry. Interesting. Do you have family members that are against guns or is everybody on the same side? Actually, and it's funny that you mentioned, I never thought about it. Most of my, I would say almost all my family is and, and relatives are all pro gun. Mm -hmm. um, I know one of my guys that works for me in the shop, his in-laws are, are very uh, anti-gun democratic um, side of the fence. And he's constantly, uh, there's a constant butting of heads, I'm going to say, in that arena. Um, so it's, it's, it's interesting because there's, I, I think the far, uh, strangest place I run into is when I go to parties or go to a, other events where you meet people outside of your normal circle and I get the question of, you know, well, what do you do for a living? Well, I make handgun holsters. And, and I get, sometimes I get that kind of step back and, um, or I've had people distance themselves and, I, and that's fine. I respect their opinion. Um, and, you know, they'll, they'll kind of weasel away once they find out where, you know, where I sit in the uh, industry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's interesting. Uh, Jeff, owner of Just Holster It, if, if people wanted to go to your place and uh, check out what you have to offer, perhaps buy a holster or a gun safe or something like that, where can they find you? Um, we're located at uh, 13350 Broadway in Alden, so right in the heart of uh, Village of Alden. Um, or you can find us online at justholsterit.com. Uh, if you come out to the store, it gives you a little more flexibility to kind of try stuff on before you buy it. I always joke with the, the women uh, when they come in with their husbands, this is the only place that the guy will actually model it in front of the mirror about three or four times. <laughs> <laughs> so it makes for entertaining. Uh, they'll look to their buddies. How's it look? Can you see it? <laughs> I love it. I love it. Excellent, Jeff. Well, thanks again for coming on. We appreciate it. Oh, thanks for having us, Tony. Appreciate it. You got it. You take care. Take care.